Okay, in the last episode of Repaint, I covered my Therizinosaurus, which was technically the first episode, even though it's not really the first episode, because all the other, other episodes were just slapped onto news and updates, and, well, yeah, now this is just, so this is considered the first episode, even though it's not the first repaint. So, oh yeah, I took out the battery so you don't make noise anymore, thank you! So now we're, this video is just going to be me showing off the rest of my repaint so it can be officially part of the repaint series. So let's begin. Gonna put the Therizinosaurus aside as he just sits with the rest of the big carnivores. Even though he's a herbivore. FYI, this video is just going to be focusing on like full on repaints where I just completely transform a figure. And I'm not, not like actually just like just where I just paint claws on the toes. That doesn't count as a repaint. Starting off strong with my first ever full repaint, Tiny the Yang Chuanosaurus. This one was incredibly basic. All I did was cover the whole thing in black paint, and then uh, go again with some of the, what is, I think this is camel. It's called camel. Obsidian claws, just like I add for all of my carnivores and some of my herbivores, depending on who they are. And then I painted the crest red, and the red was actually really difficult to paint on because Red is one of those tricky paints, along with white, and there's probably another one that I just don't remember about. A lot of people keep telling me that this is my best repaint, so I guess that means I peaked way too soon. But I can't really blame them for saying that, because it is one of my best looking ones so far. Even though it's like, it's early on, but it is surprising that I hit gold with my first ever repaint. That just, that's a really good feeling right there. Next is the Tarbosaurus. This one, uh, I, okay, this one actually does count as a repaint because I did do a lot to change it. For, like, for starters, you can see already that I painted the whole belly red before it did not have this red belly. You can look at past vid episodes of Dino Duels to see what, see what the Tarbosaurus looked like because he's featured in a lot of episodes. He's the main antagonist, King Tarbo. But I painted his claw, I also painted his claws the obsidian color, including those back claws that no one ever talks about. So I guess this does count as a simple yet effective repaint of just completing this figure. It was already awesome, but now it's even more awesome. Next up we have this Miragaya, as I call him, Death the Kitagaya. As his colors, the story behind him is that I wanted to do Stego Reaper, which is uh, uh, like uh, what was it? a Jurassic World live creature I made up as an apex to be based off of uh, the Grim Reaper from Soul Eater. But I didn't want to paint my Stegosaurus, so I got this Miragaya and decided, wait, why not just meet in the middle? I'll just make this guy Death the Kid Agaya, which is basically Death the Kid, which is Lord Death's son. And this one really wasn't that hard. All I did was like dry brush a bunch of black all over the rest of the body, including this leg here to really make it help rather than just that sickly green that was dominating the body. The sickly green is fine if it's complemented by the black, but there was just no black on this half of the figure and it was just really ruining the figure. I also painted over that white stripe that was here before, painted it, uh, gave it a gray beak, yellow eyes over the red ones, because Death the Kid has yellow eyes. And I also, a fun little detail, he's asymmetrical, he has stripes on this side, but not on that side, just to, because that's also Death the Kid's feature, he has white stripes over one side of his hair, but on the other side of his hair he has, like, just pure black. Added gray spikes everywhere, and white plates, and just gave it little Grim Reaper faces on them. And this guy, actually, you should, probably should have already known about this guy, because he was featured in a Dinosaur Story remake, the third movie. He makes an appearance. For some reason, I put this Dimetrid on here. It's another one that was part of the remake. This one, I, I guess, is because I did add a few more things. I uh, gave him, I painted his claws, I gave him a belly, an actual belly, and I glossed up his sail with sparkle dragon flash. It, I thought it was like some sort of special paint, sparkly paint, but it turns out it's just sparkle glue, and it literally just made his sail sparkle. That's literally it. That's all I needed this Dimetrodon for, a sparkly Dimetrodon. You, 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 you already know this guy from the movie as well. He plays the piano at the end. We got another small one. It's my boy Utah. I took, I took one of my old blue figures because I don't really need multiple blues. I only need one. And I turned it into something better. This one was also easy because it was already mostly gray. I th although I think I did paint a lot of gray under the belly. But then like here, this is the same gray, the factory paint of the uh, of the already gray blue as in blue the blue the dinosaur not blue the color uh then i just added i just painted on this purple there's a lot of purple i had to mix my own shade of purple because yeah I, back then 
I didn't buy my own purple yet because I thought I could save money just by mixing blue and red. Oh man, I remember. I also had to paint my own- I had to mix my own shade of yellow. And that was not fun. I, I remember painting on this dandelion yellow and it didn't look as... It looked very like a very soft yellow. So I had to mix my own yellow and make it like a more gold yellow and it looks a lot better. You look much better now. And as I also gave you your bendy quills. Those, these quills are actually a hassle. Because I've lost count on how many times they've broken off because someone, like, one time Carl accidentally fell on you. One time you fell down on your own accord and it just snapped off. It's just, super glue is apparently not as super as you think. Like, oh my gosh, it breaks off so easily. Either way, the eye is still the same. I didn't paint over the eye or the mouth or really anything. It's just, I just gave it some purple. I just painted purple over it and then just glued on some, I just painted some yellow, glued on some yellow. I actually colored the yellow with the color shift paint because color shift paint was new for me back then. So I wanted to play around with it. I also gave it a little bit of it on your back and the tip of your tail should be shiny purple. Oh, I also painted the, the claws. I repaint, I painted over the claws with the obsidian color. I don't think I ever showed this one in a video. It's Mini-Me. Like, I never gave Mini-Me his own little video. This one is basically Beta, but I painted over it just to be Mini-Me because Beta looked perfect. Be uh, Mini-Me is supposed to be a Patsy Yaka Waka Waka Saurus. It's from Dinosaur King. Also, it shows up in the same episode as Tiny the Yang Tuanosaurus. If you don't understand what these nicknames are, go go watch Indominus Rex 01's, go to Indominus Rex 01's channel, find Dinosaur King Commentaries, Season 2, Episode 5, and you'll understand. Uh, but I do recommend watching the whole series. I know you're not watching, I'm, I'm looking, let's see, you're, you're not watching. Go watch right now. Anyway, painted Obsidian Claws, but you won't be able to tell because the whole figure is just black. Black, red, like the a, like a really dark shade of red. And then immediately afterwards, I just uh, dry brushed some silver on it, on it to give it that shiny look. Because the Mini-Me is a very shiny dinosaur. Also, as a, a bonus, I painted the inside of the mouth to be more pink. But I don't think I did a very good job because it looks no different than what it normally should look like. But I also... I remember having such trouble painting the eyes on this thing. And eventually I just gave up and decided, you know what, you don't have pupils. You'll just have bright blue eyes and I'm gonna give you a white pupil. That's your face. You're gonna have the face of evil. A possessed face. And the the only thing that I don't like about this is that it, now Mini-Me has raptor claws, even though Mini-Me doesn't have a raptor claw in the show. But you know what, it's whatever. Now here's fish and chips. I think this one's probably my uh, least favorite. I don't hate it, but it's like someone has to be at the bottom of the list. And unfortunately, it's fish and chips because I just feel like I didn't do a very good. Like I did good with it, but I feel like I could have done. I didn't do good enough because you can see the sickly green of the old Baryonic discount Grim, basically be before Grim even existed. And I, I did paint over it, I did a good job. I think I painted the whole thing gray first, but you can still, it still feels like I can see that sickly green behind all of this. No matter how much I paint it, I can still see cracks of the old color still showing up, and especially on the joint here, because joints love to rub off paint. I know there's a way to do it, but I don't like the idea of uh, do, doing actual damage to these figures. Painting it is one thing, but actually grabbing a saw and cutting them open and doing something to them, it just feels, I don't like the feeling. Because I'm always worried I'm going to mess up. I guess the face, it looks nice, but it's just this. This really just bugs me. The how... Because ah, that green really does show. It's a nice figure, but it just doesn't seem like it's my favorite. Especially since Fish and Chips is a Baryonyx from Dinosaur King. He has those spikes running down his back. And this Baryonyx does not have that. I was going to glue on, like make my own custom ones and glue them on. But I decided against it and just leave it as a Jurassic World Baryonyx. Also, I do, one thing I do like about this figure is that uh, I gave it a nice blend of orange and yellow up here. It's a very nice combination of color. I think that's probably my favorite part of this figure. Now on to what is probably one of the easiest repaints, like, ever. It's uh, Sam I Am, the Dinosaur King Allosaurus. Bad Lab Big Rock Allosaurus, one of the Roar Strikers version. And it still roars! That's fantastic. Why are you crouched over like this? I kind of, that's something I don't like about the Allosaurus, how they're always in a crouching position. But you know what? He can stand, so it's fine. So this one is actually one of the figures where I didn't attach the tail. I actually 
painted it on afterwards. Like I painted it on, I painted the tail on first, then I glued it, then I just slapped it on to where it's supposed to be. And this one painted all gray, then I painted some blue over, like, I think I had to go for multiple shades of gray before it was ready. Then I painted on the blue patterns. I went, I didn't follow any particular reasoning for the blue. I just went wild and just looking at the concept art, I did. And then also the crest was probably the most difficult part. Actually, the whole face was pretty difficult. I also, as you can see, I put some color shift blue on the spikes. So it has this, gives off this purple glow to it. I also did a little, a little bit of uh, that color shift on the face as well. It, it also has that peg problem here, but it's it's pretty similar in color already, and it fades in nicely, unlike the Baryonyx, where it's just an eyesore. I actually didn't have a shade. I tried to mix my own shade of pink for the crest because he has bright pink crest, but I couldn't do it. So I eventually just bought my own pink and then just just painted it on, and now he looks good. I'm not gonna go in depth with these guys because these guys, I covered these guys pretty recently and that video exploded in views like oh my gosh it seems e it seems to double in views every time I blink like every time I check it just explodes in views so but anyway yeah it, I'm very surprised people actually preferred the red one over the blue one because every time I ask my parents or Indominus or literally anyone they always say they like the blue one more and yet I did the poll and everyone likes the red one more and it really took me off guard. Huh, but you know what? The people have spoken. Everyone prefers the red one. Three more to go and I saved the, the three most popular ones for last or at least the ones that should be the most popular because they're based on actual dinosaur characters. It is Chomp the Triceratops. Uh, can I go closer without... Mm, I guess, yeah, that works. Chomp the Triceratops. This one was actually a difficult one to do because so I painted off this orange, this this darker factory orange first. Then I paint, mixed my own shade of orange on top of it to, to just, uh, like first the whole thing was just covered in orange. Then I covered the whole, th all these parts as well. Did some dry brushing of the white here. And of course the frill has a mix of color shift purple, color shift green, and a little bit of that glossy stuff, that glossy sparkly stuff because Chomp actually has that when he uses thunder, electric char, no. Was it Electric Charge? I think it's Electric Charge, yes. And uh, I, I call this figure the hardest one to make because, just be, simply because of the shade of yellowish orange that I had to mix for this. It took so long to get the right color on and it took so many attempts to actually get the color to stick on to Chomp. But eventually I persevered and he is finally ready and he is just, this is another one of my favorites. Next up is everyone's favorite Carnotaurus. It's Ace. And now, I was very happy when Mattel made a tiny Carnotaurus because I didn't want Ace to be a gargantuan car car uh, Carnotaur because Ace isn't- Ace is the smallest of the big- of the, the three Dinosaur King dinosaurs. So I'm very glad they made this young Carnotaurus model and I was able to just paint because the paint on that young one was just bad. In fact, even the quality, the feel of that toy did not feel very good as well either. It just felt like a very poorly made toy. But now, I've painted it over with my own shade of blue, the, sh the same shade I used on my boy Utah, the Utah Raptor. Then I gave it some yellow stripings, I went a little wild with, with the placement of the stripe, I didn't really go for anything particular. Painted the horns yellow. I also paint gave some obsidian to the claws and the osteoderm on his back, just because I wanted to give him an extra- he looked too pl he looked too bland without them. And the best feature. You wanna know how big the black T-Rex was, Becky? It was this big! Uh, obviously I got this idea from Prehistoric Planet, where I just, well, of course, the arms were blue there, but, I, and I painted this guy with blue arms as well, but Indominus suggested I paint them red instead so they stand out more. So now it just looks like he has bloody hands. He did the crime. I mean, this is the face of a killer. And now we get to the last member of the D team. Yeah, this one was uh, another, This I'd say this one was also pretty difficult, but, or maybe just the most time consuming. First, this was used to be my uh, Camp Cretaceous Parasaurolophus. It's one of those Roar Strikers one that never shuts up. But you know what, at least I have a little more control of when, I, when it makes noise. First I painted it over with that camel color. Then I painted its feet white, just like Chomp. Gave it a good color of green, a nice shade of Paris green. Okay, so the best feature of Paris, this Paris, I wanted Paris to be a Parasaurolophus Lux. 
So I bought some glow-in-the-dark paint, and the best part about glow-in-the-dark paint is that it blends in so well. You can barely tell that I painted on the I painted glow-in-the-dark paint on the crest and the face. And then basically, I can't do it now. Actually, let me see if I can do it. Let's see if this works. Cross fingers. Oh, and it's still too bright. Dang it. Oh, this is the best I can do right now. Oh, that's right. I painted over the pattern as well. I forgot. That's that's how well the, the glow-in-the-dark paint is hidden. That I painted over the pattern and you couldn't even tell. Uh, is it dark enough? There. There we go. I think that's dark enough to get it. You can see the back just glowing a bit. And a little bit of the crest. The eye is also supposed to glow, or maybe it's just one eye that glows. Because I painted over the other one by mistake. Unfortunately, filming in the dark is very difficult, so that's really the best I can show of the glow-in-the-dark feature. It's a lot better in person. And this is a sneak peek of who I'm repainting next. In fact, th this is this and the fact that I said he instead of what is my next clue. Let's see if any anyone can actually figure out what's coming up next. You know what, I'm also going to include Echo as part of this this little batch because I, aside from painting the claws, I also painted a little scar on Echo. Yay. Oh wow, your eye is not placed right. And that's about it. That's every single repaint I have so far. At least all of the full repaints I've done so far. Definitely more to come. No, seriously, I have way too many. And yet not nearly enough. <laughs>